What's up guys, Prox here, and I am back with another video. I'm feeling a little bit, you know, iffy today. Actually, actually I'm, I'm feeling pretty sick. But I'm still gonna do these uh, 3D uh, stuff. 3D videos. And I'm kind of going back to sort of my roots. Well, my roots. <laughs> my roots have just started. <laughs> I've started going back. Because I sort of looked at the analytics and you guys really seem to like the real-time uh, modeling videos. And... Uh, some of you like the rendering stuff as well, the material, so I'm going to combine them both into this series, which is going to be called Product Creation. So what we'll be creating today, which is going to be like the first set, and I'll be cutting these into shorter, shorter segments, but today we'll be, we will be modeling uh, the Vengeance 2000 wireless surround sound headset. Okay, I have it on my head right now. I have it right here. So I have it in real life. Makes it easier. All right, I advise you to pick your headset, the one you have on your desk or something like that, and uh, follow my tips. You can model this one as well, because then you can do exactly as I do. So uh, we're gonna start by modeling the cup in this video, and we'll probably carry uh, cut it there, and then carry on later. So let's start off with a cylinder. About that big. And I'm gonna remove the segments. I'm gonna press J to remove the brackets. All right, because they sometimes confuse me between lines if the model gets complicated. And I'm press G to get away the grid. Because I don't like the grid. For some reason. <laughs> then I'm gonna press F4 to get the wires up. Then I'm going to right click and convert to editable poly. I hope you guys can hear me properly right now because uh, my microphone is a little bit far away. And uh, yeah, because I don't have a microphone boom yet. So just tell me guys in the comments if you need, need me to take it back closer to where I had it. So I'm going to delete the top and bottom cap polygons. And I'm going to select all the vertices, select the scale tool, and press X to get the gizmo up. Uh, this is sort of a, a, a lot of people have a problem with this. If you press uh, one of these uh, movement tools here, and the gizmo is not showing, try to press X, because that sort of toggles it on and off. So we're going to scale these in a bit, because uh, the cup, uh, you know, the... Uh, the elements, the air elements aren't completely round, they're sort of oval shaped. Alright, so now that we got our oval shape, maybe it's a little too oval shaped. Because they're pretty round, they're the roundest sort of uh, headphones that I've ever kind of encountered. Yeah. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, yeah. You can always change that later with a. Uh, with an FFD box. And uh, so the the edge here, I'm probably gonna take these off right now. That's probably the smartest thing to do. First of all, um, it's sort of curving in, so I'm going to scale these in just a tad. And then I'm going to ring the outer edges and connect them and I'm going to scale that ring out. Okay. Great, we can scale these in a little bit. So now it has a slight curve and it has a taper towards the center. Great, that's really what we want. Oh. And uh, if you watched my sort of uh, my my weapon modeling videos, the one that kind of got canceled because uh, file got corrupted, um, and the other one, I sort of did basic modeling first, and then I did detailing for turbo smoothing. Now I should I always strive to do that, but this model is pretty simple. It's pretty easy. So doing the turbo smooth detailing uh, straight away, or the detailing straight away really isn't an issue 
but uh, I'm, I'm not gonna do that right now so uh, this model is gonna be uh, turbo smoothed basically I'm gonna do subdivision modeling and when we have a curved surface like a, a sphere like surface that can create issues when it's not eight uh, sides. Like now we have 18 sides and that can create problems. So now I'm gonna show you a technique that I use to create sort of uh, quadric spheres, you know, quadrified sphere shapes. So what I'll do here is that I'll select verts that I wanna make corners. I wanna make corners out of these, uh, out of these verts right here okay if you can see them it's probably really hard to see I've never really thought of this but you guys all probably don't have the same resolution as I do and uh, when I do these videos do you see the verse do you see what I'm doing do you see the text and stuff like that because it might get really small on your monitor if you don't have a big monitor I haven't really thought of that before now so I'm sorry if all these videos have been impossible to see what I've been doing but I guess you guys will tell me in the comments if something's wrong. Then I'll probably go back to 1080p, although it's horrible to work at 1080p. 1440p is the resolution I like. And it should be, it's called original on YouTube, the size. Because ten because 1440p isn't the standard that's supported by YouTube. Well, it's there, obviously, but just they, they just call it original. So what I do is I select these corners and I pull them down. And then I select the edges right here that was created for the corners and I hold shift and I pull them up. After that I go into vertex mode again, click on target weld and I'm going to weld these back down. You know there are a lot faster ways of doing this, I just figured out. But you know, whatever comes to mind and how you do things it's the way to do it. There's a lot of ways to do stuff. Some people some people might say that this is the wrong way to do stuff. You know what? As artists say there's no wrong way. However, there is a wrong way, but you know, I don't really care if there's a wrong way. So after that, I pull these corners up and then I go back into edge mode again and I select the lines in between the uh, these sort of new polygons that I've created, the new corners. And I press W and I hold shift and I pull this up. After that, I go into target weld mode again and I weld the corners back onto these edges. Now this probably looks really weird and you're like, don't understand why I'm doing this. Well, you, you'll see when, it, when we get there, okay? So now we got this weird shape right here, and uh, so what we want to do then is select the top vert, press R, scale in. Select the next level of vert, scale in, and the final level of sc and scale in, okay, and then yeah as you can see now it's turning in more to sort of a dome shape then I want to cap the top off and I want to click that vert and click that click on connect go into cut mode and cut across so that I get all quads quads meaning squares there are no triangles involved only squares and that looks not good at all it looks horrible and i'm gonna fix that in a gif you just select all the verts for the uh, piece and you click on relax twice maybe three times oh don't do that yet we uh i i, I noticed something wrong that i did select the uh, lines that are in the middle of these sort of corners and just press backspace to remove them to create quads instead of triangles and then then we can relax two three times if you like 
then you select this uh, the lower ring and connect it once again select all the lines now all the words move them up a little bit relax them and you'll see it shrink in as it relaxes now this can be counteracted by you just scaling it up like so all right and it's a little bit flatter so we're gonna scale it down a little bit and the shape of it you kind of just have to it's up to you you have to judge it yourself you know if you want it to, to be a little bit flatter you gotta should flatten it out a little bit it's all up to you all right now uh, we can probably model the next piece yeah we can do that in this video as well can we yeah we don't need to start a new video we can do that i need some water though so i'm gonna take a break real soon That's sort of a weird shape. Hmm. I guess we will start with a box. Yeah, a box is seem, seems good. So create a box. Doesn't really matter where. Just uh, straight off convert it to an editable poly. And. Uh, Move the box to about here, a little bit under this line right here, okay? And make it a little bit lower, like so. And sort of study your object, look at what it needs, where it needs to go, what sizes you're looking for. All right, good. Then go into the top view move it sort of closer doesn't need to be accurate right now because we're gonna change all that now we're going to um, i'm going to move this up a little bit then i'm going to connect the center right here and i'm going to move this down a little bit just a little bit a tidgy smidge <laughs> yeah i'm gonna see that kind of valuing how tight that corner is and it seems to bend even more at the edge there so I'm going to connect this once again and slide it down towards the edge and then curve this in even more and I'm kind of wondering uh, if I should connect this one as well but not that far out move that one down slightly okay and then i need to select the edges here and they curve quite a lot so i can't just do that with the turbo smooth i have to actually model in the curve in the base model Meaning, I have to make sure that these are quads afterwards. So I isolate the model and I just make sure that everything is quadrified, basically. Okay, so unhide all. And then it's too big. So now that we have a curve, we can't just move the, uh, what's this top front R. We gotta have to scale them in a little bit. Cause what we're trying to do here is make it fit over here. And I see that it's, of course it follows the curve that way as well. Meaning we should connect it once through the middle oops sort of lost my selection there connected once through the middle from the top scale it out 
and I have a feeling that this is a little bit smaller. Now it's gonna look blocky in the beginning. Uh, you just gotta get used to that when you're making your base model. It's gonna look blocky. A lot of people think that their model is terrible and that you know they're that they uh, they can't do it properly. But it it's just the way it is. It'll look terrible in the beginning. Now this one doesn't go all the way to the bottom. This one is actually a lot further back, uh, like so. And then the sort of tweaking uh, comes in to sort of align stuff. And it doesn't bend uh, too much that way, meaning we could uh, fix these up a little bit uh, to be closer. Now I'm just now I'm just tweaking and tweaking and uh, this sh you should mostly al avoid this kind of uh, workflow because it wastes time. You don't really need to do this. This is what you'll be doing later anyway. So, well, that stuff just happens to me. <laughs> Can't control it. <laughs> it's uh, it's the perfectionist in me that's kind of pushing me to do this. Alright, so I should probably uh, I should probably leave it there and uh, take a break. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, see you in part two.